to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We've got a special opportunity here for three special guests here. We are the four horsemen here providing coverage on Aduro Clean Technology, who had a groundbreaking announcement this week. We are going to get the reaction from our panel visitors, Yazan, Penny, and Mariush. As I promised Friday to you guys, the long wait is here. And you guys get to hear the opinions on what this could potentially mean for Aduro now and going forward in the future. Uh, stay tuned. This is a special treat where you get to hear multiple opinions on what the impact of this news could mean for the company now and going forward. I'll turn it over to Yazan for his opening comments about what this could mean. Yazan? Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you guys are at. Uh, thank you for hosting us, Ryan. Uh, amazing to be here. So let me start off with the caveat that everyone needs to hear. We are long shareholders, so we obviously have our own biases uh, going into this. But let me also now move into the results, because I think this week's results show and confirm to us that have done a lot of diligence for the last two plus years that Aduro has a solution to plastic waste upscaling that is second to none. No one has the solution. No one has the uh, power that Aduro has in terms of uh, upscaling profitably. And, uh, and why I say profitably is because of the yield. When you are producing a yield of 95%, the loss, the, the amount of losses is very minimal. And as such, that gives you a lot of room to um, to basically uh, re reduce the cost, both on CapEx as well as in OpEx. And I think the interview that Mariusz had with Eric was, was a great eye-opener when he said that our approach is going to require, for example, one plant as opposed to three when you're talking to the other technologies. They need pre-processing, they need post-processing, and they, they're very expensive. And that's the reason why a lot of the other 70 technologies, because they have yields anywhere between 70% and below, um, they, you know, they suffer. They have to be central units, they have to be large, the capex, the opex is significantly higher. So that's a that, that's kind of my original reaction, and and my reaction is, you know, irrespective of what the share price did, I'm I'm not really looking at the share price. I I know that a common theme comes about, which is valuation, and I get that question a lot, and my answer is simple. Prior to these results, we know Arrow had said that the valuation should be anywhere between 380 Canadian and 530. Needless to say, with these positive results, I think it's way higher. Now, where where is it going to be? Honestly, I don't know. You have the best technology out there for a major problem that every plastic producer has to care about. That's another thing that comes around a lot. People say, why do we have to care? You know, it's a pre-revenue company or revenue, the revenues are little, um, they're not profitable, so on and so forth. Say so you have to care because in 2025, the clock starts ticking. These producers have a deadline to have a partner on any new production under, under the plastic, uh, plastic Act, whether US, Canada, any developed country, basically they have to have that. So, you know, what, what about a company that already has presence in two countries, Canada, Canada and Netherlands? They also have a, um, a country manager in Mexico, for those that forgot. So, you know, and they do have a team in the U.S. So definitely, you know, some reminders for those people. Um, and I'm going to take a step back and I'm, I'm going to let... Uh, Penny and Marius comment, and then we'll, we'll talk a bit about the impact of these results and my personal view in a bit. All right, I'll go. Um, 
I could not have been more excited seeing 95%. I, what, you know, I, I think I've heard 80 a couple of times mentioned, and that was where I set my bar. And I was happy with that because I know that pyrolysis is, is, you know, currently it's a gold standard. It's basically heating things up very hot with a lot of pressure. And that typically gives you, you know, about 30% char and about 10% wax. So wax is saleable, but I wouldn't really count it. So, you know, you're looking at a competitor sitting at about 60%, you know, as a, as a good yield and having 95% come out and seeing that it was only 1.2% char was well beyond my expectation. And it really moved my, my personal future um, goals for the company because it made me refigure all the numbers. I mean, that was, uh, I, I couldn't have been any, any more excited. And especially uh, that the, the numbers were based on uh, polypropylene, which, you know, it's kind of in the middle. It takes more, more heat to, uh, to work with uh, polyethylene and takes a little less for polystyrene. So I was happy to see what we got in the middle. because so I think that might show, uh, might be a really, really good, um, a good way to base the rest of the figures until we, we have them exactly. So I, I just couldn't be more happy. So. Okay. So uh, Yazan mentioned a little bit about the valuation. So let's, let's think about the valuation from two points of view. One individual valuation based on what we think the company can generate. And then two is what the, what the comps are doing. So, you know, we like to talk about or compare a pure cycle. What's pure cycle market cap? Well, half a billion dollars, uh, something like that, more than that. Uh, and, 150 now without the debt. <laughs> right. So, so the, with, with the debt, the enterprise value is over a billion dollars. Okay. And as Penny just said, you know, they're going to have a yield of about 60 percent so so a a worse technology a company that doesn't own the technology is worth more than a billion dollars and here we have 95 percent yield all the other verticals we own the technology we have a better business model because it's licensing huge profit margins so you're telling me that we shouldn't be worth a billion dollars today. We should totally be worth $3 billion today. If we are comparing ourselves to, to, to something like pure cycle. Okay. So now what about, what about like how much money the company can generate? Well, they, they had us, they showed us in the presentation that if a, if they land a large client, that would equate to about $100 million worth of yearly revenues and about $80 million of EBITDA from one client, okay? One client. Like, do you think there's only one client that needs this solution, right? What if we get 10 clients? That's pretty, that's pretty uh, conservative, 10 clients. And so that would be like 800, almost a billion dollars of EBITDA, a billion dollars of EBITDA, what is a billion dollars of EBITDA worth? Like 10 billion, 20 billion? I mean, we, we can all dream up numbers, but like, that's just 10 clients, right? And so now, and another thing is, I'm thinking like after this news came out, I'm thinking like about those multi-billion dollar companies that are Aduro is working with. We know the name Shell. But, and then we don't know the names of the others. Like, put yourself in their shoes. Like, what are they gonna do? They're gonna be like, you know what? We don't like 95% yield. We prefer 60%. You know, we don't want to have the best technology in the world. We wanna go with the third, fourth technology in the world, right? We don't wanna solve this problem. Like, wh what do you think is going through their head? Like if you are Shell, if you are a multi-billion dollar company, are you gonna be like, 
you know what? I am not going to go with a 95% yield. I prefer 60%, right? So it's, it's like so many times I, I, I sit and I'm like, people are like, well, why, why isn't this company getting more attention? Well, that's your opportunity here. That's your opportunity here because I don't think if we were trading at NASDAQ or some kind of reputable exchange, I don't think you would have this opportunity. I really don't because you only have it because like, Ryan, do you think you would be getting comments that this is a scam if this thing was trading on NASDAQ? Nope. Nope, right? It's, it's, it's a stamp of approval. You are getting those comments that this is a scam. I'm getting those comments that this is a scam and we're just dreaming, you know, it's gonna, go, it's gonna be zero. So I agree with you, Azan. It's like, we need, to, we need to graduate from this trash exchange and move this thing on NASDAQ because otherwise it's, people are just not gonna believe that this company has the good. They're just not gonna believe it. They need to have 10 to $20 stock price and then the technology will start working for everybody and it's not and all of a sudden it's not going to be a scam for nobody <laughs> to add to that comment and, and you know it's actually like a fair comment but to add to that the issue is it, it's twofold right you know regardless of what we say people have a sub bias we have a sub bias because when we look at something we see we're like this is mind-blowing no way why is it trading at uh, you know uh 75 million us like if it's that good it should be you know let's say that it's half a billion let's not say a billion but why is it not trading because you know there's i think there's a lack of you know someone on uh, penny's discord mentioned something there's a bit of a lack of credibility because of the exchange i think it's the exchange that's on and as well as because um, I think some of the, um, we're all used to, like unfortunately in this era, and even we, I, I'm gonna say myself included, we're all in this, um, you know, immediate gratification mindset. We need to see that something is published and news is published and we see the stock pops 50, 100%. Why didn't it happen? then something is wrong. Well, it didn't happen because one, it, it didn't have the time for enough people to be aware of it, to digest it. But the other thing is, again, it's a limitation. Today, when I speak to a lot of um, Canadian brokers and um, investors, a lot of them, unfortunately, are stuck in this tunnel vision that they're not touching anything that is not profitable because they got jaded from 2021 and onwards. And they're like, okay, look, if it's, you know, not profitable, we're not going to touch it. So we're, you know, so we're turning into the investors, the few, and, you know, that are um, retail and, or brokers that are willing. And I can tell you today, based on my knowledge, I have two brokers in Canada, the U and different spaces, different places uh, outside of myself that have 5 million shares of the 40 million float on their book. They have no interest in selling anytime soon. I know of several people that own, you know, million plus size. So let's say that there's 25, 30 million float on this thing. This can go fast. It just needs to be the right you know, on the on the right platform. And I'm pretty sure the Adura team is getting um, enough indication and interest because if I'm speaking to bankers in the US, friends and so on, that are saying this name on uh, NASDAQ will do significantly better. Um, it, it can be that, you know, they're just all being friendly and nice and saying, you know, um, if you can tell these guys, just move on to, NASDAQ because we want to collect fees. They're saying it because obviously they understand the si the significance of the problem. They're facing, they're, they're getting a lot of demand for 
uh, solutions for plastic waste, especially after the infl uh, Anti-Inflation uh, Act, uh, with billions of dollars sitting on the sideline, basically wanting to be invested in something that can resolve this problem. Um, one of the one of the bankers I was talking to was saying that there's over uh, 40 or 80 billion dollars under management that want to tackle recycling. Imagine, you know, that's one major. It's a major bank, but I mean, that's one major bank that ha that that is saying how much there is sitting on the sidelines. So it's just accessibility, and we as you know people that can have access to the CSE venture uh, and uh, and the OTC have this luxury. A lot of people that even when talking to the company, they have said that many of the roadshows that they've had in the US, that was a common um, comment that they keep kept get, getting, which is, uh, guys, if you were on NASDAQ or close to, we'd be able to buy significant position for our uh, funds. So. At at one point, I'm pretty sure they're they're gonna be considering it. I don't know when, but I'm just saying the opportunity is in front of us. And everyone that says why why why, it's literally what you said. It's the confirmation is gonna come from the stock price moving up. Um, just remind yourselves of one thing: like you know, when re-rating happens, they happen quick, and they don't look back. We've seen it even in in mega caps. Like, look at what happened with, with Nvidia. Like, li literally, went from sub two hundred bucks in you know when everyone's saying the world is crashing and you know there's no way to come back. They came back. That we've got the best chip for AI. We're talking about an already three two hundred plus billion dollar company. <laughs> you know, went to uh, one point eight trillion dollars in not such a big time. So people need to realize the significance of being a solution that's second to none. And that that I don't think people still uh, grasp that. And that's fine. That, that's kind of the reason why we are here. I love that people haven't grasped that. I mean, am I the only one here that's loving the price right now? Because we were just de-risked so much. And it tells me that this is my opportunity. I mean, I feel like I've like I've got some sort of golden ticket and nobody else knows about it. Like we're we're only sending this to friends, right? Nobody else could see this video. Because <laughs> like, we've got four bulls in a room, you know, picking apart all the things that we figured out. I when I look at when I'm looking at technology, the thing that I'm really focusing on is the CapEx and OpEx required. Now, a Duro's licensing model takes away almost all of that concern. But what really does it for me is they're, they're playing in the big leagues. These are multi-billion dollar companies that they're working with. And we already can see that the results are fantastic. So... I'm happy. I, I was just talking to another friend in the U.S. today and, you know, he's looking at the charts saying, OK, well, I'm I'm watching 120 after there we fly, you know, on the U.S. side now that we're at like 75 million as the market cap. And um, but he just couldn't understand, you know, he's not going in more because the volume looks low. And I'm like, oh, well, the, the volume's hidden on the Canadian side. So we, we do have a couple different things happening where, you know, when, when you look from the U.S. side, you're like, there's not really a lot happening here. I see I see the trend. I see where it's going, but I can't tell why. So, I mean, I, I feel like we've got a, a little secret here and I'm OK keeping it a secret for another year or two. So just don't tell anyone. I'm ready to go to the moon. <laughs> you know, I have I have all the shares that I want, and you know I got my ticket. I buckled up, and I'm ready to go whenever whenever Aduro is ready to take me there. Let me jump in real quick before I turn it back over to Mariusz. I thought that the interview that you did uh, just this week with Eric Appleman was critical. Um, I want to circle back with the viewing audience 
and understand where they can find this information. Uh, links will be provided both in the description and the comments section of this video, as well as links to both Penny's reaction video from this week, and as well as Mariush, which I put in my number one in my personal archive of favorites. Um, there was a comment that was said, Mariush, your question to Eric about the scalability and Eric's response to you that the underlying value is in the chemistry and that that doesn't change. He also went so far as to change some of the attributes that would in fact change to improve the process as the continuous flow improved over time as the reactors get larger, but he came back to the chemistry does not change. And I thought that was really smart and I appreciated you asking that question on behalf of all shareholders and everybody following this story. Mariusz? Yeah, no, I think uh, both the press release was the most important press release in the company's history. And then that interview was was just amazing. Uh, I mean, of course, he's he's biased, but he didn't have to join them. He could have just stayed at the previous job that he had. Nobody, nobody forced him to join them. He, he, he said it himself. I joined because they are second to none. I joined because they have the best technology in the world. So like, I mean, how many, like really, I don't, I don't think I've ever been involved in a situation where I feel like there's so much certainty uh, as to what the outcome is going to be. Like how I've never had a micro cap stock that had the best something in the world and there's nobody even close and nobody knows about this story. Like, and then we have indication after indication after indication. All I hear is that uh, here and there is that uh, when people are testing it or companies are testing, they're just blown away by the result. Well, now we we're freaking blown away. Because I, I didn't know that it was going to be 95. I know the yield was good. I, know the I knew the technology was going to work. But 95%, like, that's just out of this world. And, and so it's like, you see, with, with companies like, you know, whether it's Meta or NVIDIA, and I think Yazan touched on, on this before, is that, a 5X on NVIDIA and 5X on Arduro are completely d two different things because you don't have, you don't ever have the conviction that something like NVIDIA is going to take you 5X. So you don't ever have the conviction to really put, put a significant money behind it. But you have that conviction on something like Arduro, at least I do, because of all the indications that I have, all the margin of safety that I have. What kind of margin of safety do you have on NVIDIA? Here, here we have such a huge margin of safety. If, if it fails, we double our money. If it succeeds, I make 40 million. Like, I don't think I have to say much more. Yazan, I'd turn it back to you for a reaction on that, but... Uh... Yeah, just to add to it, I, I think you mentioned the internal aspect of Eric Appleman's um, you know, involvement with Aduro, but I, I pointed out in my video that I just released today that, yes, he took a position with Aduro, but think about his independent position prior to uh, his addition to the Aduro team and how that vetting of those 50 additional companies through the campus at Brightlands kind of allowed me to sit back and say, okay, either one of two things. And and I think Eric Appleman strikes to me to be a very straightforward, very honest, very intelligent, and very well-spoken individual. So if he's speaking from a biased perspective, he, he has got me believing in what I think he believes in and that this is, in fact, the best in the industry. And I, I, I could sense a little reservation in that I think he wanted to say more but at the very end of the interview, if you watched it through the very end, he said, you know, I hope I conveyed my excitement, you know, and, and I think he, he did, but he, he's trying to convey that in the most professional manner, because for me, the full circle is going to be where these companies that they are dealing with now provide that reciprocation and say, yes, indeed, everything that has been conveyed in the marketplace is true. And here's what we're seeing with our independent research. 
I'll turn it over to Yazan. Yazan. Thanks. So, uh, look, I'm, I'm going to conclude with, um, you know, my personal view is, you know, like re reconfirming what what you guys uh, have been saying. It's it's really under discovered. I think, you know, the uh, the, the thing that I like is, um, you know, like we're not doing this on a Sunday because we have to. We're doing this on a Sunday because we love talking about this and you you know there is a, there is a point in your life where you know i think this is one where it really hits home because i think not only you know similar to what penny mentioned earlier i think this is one that you know i'm going to feel really good about what you know what what this company is going to do to my portfolio but I also feel very good uh, as to what they will do from a you know world um, stand, and just to touch on something that Mariusz mentioned, just so that people grasp why he was talking about the hundred million in you know in, in sales or revenues, potential revenues, and you know eighty million EBITDA. And why is that one customer so on? Remind to a reminder to everyone. We have, we produce currently 450 million tons of waste plastic a year. We have, we're sitting at over a billion tons of waste plastic accumulated that is, no one has a solution for it, okay? And the, the, the 100 million when originally projected was based on smaller clients and so on. But the sum of parts was about 300, 400,000 tons per year. That they would process and on a licensing model so when we when when marius is saying you know why wouldn't several clients come in so one client three hundred thousand tons you know like put it in 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 uh in comparison so three hundred thousand versus 450 million per, per year um three million versus 450 million per year it's it's nothing it's still not a no, we're not coming here to say they're going to, you know, take the entire market. We're, we're talking about a teeny bit of a marketplace that is just growing further. And the biggest, the other big, you know, takeaway that I want to remind people uh, as a closing statement, every year, the cost of hosting that contaminated waste plastic, that's about 80% of the annual production is going higher every publication is saying that you know countries don't want this garbage and you know i've read somewhere that's like thousand to a thousand five hundred us per ton just to host it per year so you're offering them a, a profitable solution to resolve this problem i again like i'm i'm Numbers can drive us to the moon, but I'm, I'm much rather stay, you know, disciplined and say this is this is for people that are trying to kind of get to how we're we're talking the numbers that we're talking. And I appreciate you hosting us on a Sunday. Penny, do you want to give us a last word here before we sign off for the day? Um well, I, I think my, you know, my biggest focus and the reason that I initially invested in Aduro was the mission. You know, it, it's plastics. It is a, it is a huge problem. I mean, we're hearing about microplastics all the time. We know that plastics are not being handled well. Um, but, and I've said this time and time again, I met, I met Ofer and talked to him and then I was sold on the management and they have proven themselves time and time again that they have been very fair with shareholders. There are no leaks of information. You don't see a chart run before news comes out. You don't see anything like that. When, they, when they've done raises in the past, it has been for the amount they needed to progress to the next step. And they've done it every single time. So the management has my faith. The, you know, the the purpose and the project is absolutely in line with, with what I look to be invested in. And they are absolutely kicking ass. I look, look at those yields. So I just can't wait to see 
where we are in a year. And I, I hope Mariusz gets his his wish sooner than later. Um, but I don't I don't mind churning down here below two bucks for I'd be fine below two bucks for for the whole next year. And I just keep packing my suitcases. So I don't know. I'm I'm happy here. It's not going to happen. You know, I see a lot of people saying, oh, I want it to be, you know, I don't want it to be too sharp. I want it to be steady. There is no steady. There is no steady. There is no, there's no, like, I I want it steady stairs. There's no stairs in micro cap stocks. They either, they either go or they just kind of like, you know, you can wish whatever stairs you want. It's not going to get what you want. Uh, But like, but like, I, I want to leave people with this message. Uh, determine if there's a problem in the world with plastic. If you think that the world has a problem with plastic, then your next job as an investor is to determine if Aduro is part of the solution. We, we got a press release that says that they have 95% yield. So now your job as an investor is to determine, is this good? How does it compare to others? If you think this is the best, like what Eric is saying, what we're saying, if you think this is the best, then the next thing is, what do you think the major players that want to solve the problem will do with the best solution? Are they going to say, no, we don't want the best solution? Or are they going to say, you know what, we're going to go with the best solution? And if they do go with the best solution, how is that going to translate into revenues and profits for a company like, like Aduro? And then once you do the math like this, then look at the valuation and see if there's any upside for you there. Look at what the competitors' valuations are and see where Aduro sits. And then make a decision whether you want to be part of it or not. Because as, as Ryan said, like he is done trying to convince everybody that you need to be on this train. Like everybody has to get their butt on the train or stay off the train and nobody's going to force you one way or the other we're we're here we're excited about this company we're long this company and we're sharing with you the facts and the excitement and it's your job to decide what you want to do well and here i've if been I... trying to make sure that i walk away with more money than you do Mariusz. <laughs> good luck <laughs> here i am still trying to load the boat <laughs> all right <laughs> um I think um, when I look at this opportunity and look at um, your um, responsibility in this relationship through social media of us providing this opportunity, you are at liberty to judge me. You are at liberty to judge everyone on this panel, as well as the management at Aduro and the integrity of what Penny discussed as trust and conviction through trust. Okay. Um, I also want you to understand that I am 18 months into this position. I've Naria sold one share. Um, if I was in this for a pump and dump, I would have always already exited my position at, let's say, $1.20. Okay. Furthermore, I convey my entry points, the dates of those entry points, and the, con- and the cost basis of each of those. Those will remain steadfast for the future. Okay. You have a due diligence responsibility to take this information and use it how you will. We do the very best we can. I wish I had the perfect thing to say to the audience out there and use social media with what I I want it to be intended to be. And that is a conduit to information, good information. And in this case, I think it is a diamond in the rough. I think utilized in the proper and responsible hands, this could be very lucrative, but it still does not relinquish your responsibility to do your own due diligence and take this information, subscribe to each of our respective channels, because if the information is there, you will be the first to hear about it through our respective conduits. 
So I'll take this opportunity to thank Mary Yush for the reaction video this week. It was phenomenal. Penny, you the same. We are in debt to you for your time. And Yazan, finally, with your subject matter expert and command on marshalling and coaching this process through, um, Adura was one of my most coveted positions in my portfolio. It's an easy company to invest in. And I just hope to convey that the same to the audience. And that way we can all enjoy uh, owning this piece of, of what is transpiring to be history in the making. My friends, thank you very much for tuning into the live stream and take care and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks guys. <laughs>